Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the SLR 8 inch 8.6 blackout that we've been messing around with. I finally got it done. I've actually shot it and tested it. Today's a bit of a bittersweet day because I have to take it back apart because it is going out for Cerakote. Gonna be a really cool color combination on this. I've wanted to do a custom color for this build from the very beginning. And we have all really nice SLR Rifle Works components. And I think it just needs to be painted. So it does take about four weeks at the Cerakote shop, which is a bummer, but I also am filing the SBR on it so I can take that pistol brace off. And so we're gonna be waiting on that anyway, so timing is fine. Everything is operating just like it should. So I thought I would go over the build list with you here today so you can kind of see some of the components that were chosen, why they were chosen, and then uh, the costs associated with those. So I'm gonna rewind you back about a week ago when we put this gun together. So let me start with the part that you've seen before. Eight inch Faxon SLR Rifle Works handguard, SLR upper receiver, and we've been waiting on the SLR lower receiver. It's finally here. Took maybe like five or six weeks to get here, but it's here, it's beautiful. I'll show it to you here in just a second. The reason that we even got here is because once again, AR-10, it'll bite you if you're not paying attention and SLRs upper and lower are only made to go together. So you can't buy an SLR upper and swap into an Arrow or an Anderson or any other of the LR-308s. Theirs is proprietary pin location, whatever. They've got cool stuff, so I don't mind having it. It's just a little expensive. All right, so that's the upper receiver. We're going to run a CMC trigger. Now, this is the last trigger that I have that's not going to be an ELF trigger. Elfman has only sent me a couple of them and I already have projects for those. And this one kind of just popped up because the lower's here. So we're gonna run the CMC trigger. This is the same trigger that I have in both of my other 8.6 blackout guns. So at least all of our 8.6 blackouts will be CMC. Maybe one day we can swap those for Elf, but CMC is okay. I just really like the new Elf triggers. Of course, we're running a Kung Fu grip. Pretty much everything from now on is gonna have a Kung Fu if it is uh, for hunting or things like that. And then we're always gonna do the long shot precision with the finger spacer. These will be for our accuracy guns, just trying to learn that. That proper finger placement has just been really handy. Uh, this one's going on the 6.5 Creedmoor. So I've got a lower parts kit. I'm probably gonna upgrade to these Strike Industries pins. The lower just got here, so it's gonna have to be a pistol for now. And we're gonna run the same buffer system that we've been running in our 8.6 Blackouts. This is an AR-10 from Armaspec. This was sent to us courtesy of AT3 Tactical. Um, these are great. Uh, getting this set up and then adjusting with your gas block is definitely the way to go. Also from AT3 Tactical, we have this W-O-J-T-E-K, probably Wotec, something like that. This is the cheapest adjustable gas block on the market. AT3's got them for like $45. And then if you use Eagle Run 2-3 discount code, you can get it even cheaper. And you have a choice of getting it with the with the adjuster Allens, which we have a bunch of those, but I, sometimes I always pick those up. I actually grabbed two of them. I grabbed an 875, which will be for the Faxon. And, and then I picked this one up for one of our Aiken Arms barrels. And then we will be running that suppressed. So Diligence Defense has the titanium adapter for my suppressor. All right, well, here is the SLR Rifle Works lower. Looks like a billet lower, but this one is special. Well, a billet lower, this is actually pretty lightweight. Uh, I don't know if they've just done some lightning through here, or maybe some of this isn't quite as thick, but it feels pretty light, but 308 lowers are pretty chunky in general. Uh, some cool designs on here. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much just a lower receiver. I guess we need to check and make sure these pins line up. That is gonna be really cool. Oh man, I'm excited about this. So Kung Fu grip coming off there, pistol on the back, and a suppressor down there on the end. Okay, let me get this put together. Unfortunately, YouTube won't let me show you how to do any of that, but most of you probably know how to put this stuff together. Oh, it looks like this one has a pin that threads in for the bolt catch, so that's cool. Uh, I think we've got a bolt catch, so 
uh, let me get to work on this and I guess I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So we've already done a video about a cheap way to build an 8.6 blackout. This is not the cheapest way to build an 8.6 blackout. It's really one of the more expensive ways to build a 8.6. SLR just makes some really nice stuff and you have to pay for it. This is the SLR Solo and it was $236 for the handguard. You can buy the upper and lower as a complete set, uh, as like a matched billet set. This one is called the B36. It's around $650 for the combined set. SLR also makes something that's called the B30, um, arguably a little bit better looking. I don't know why I chose this one. Maybe I didn't see the other one, but if I do another SLR build in AR10, I would probably choose the B30. I've been enjoying these strike takedown pens. They're called shift pens. I think it's a quality upgrade over what comes with your normal parts kit. Those pens are $28. Typically I'll do a lower parts kit from Anderson or maybe from AT3 Tactical. This one was an old kit that I had from a few years back. It's the CMMG and it was $63. I chose the parts kit without the fire control group. You can definitely just do a mil spec trigger in here. You don't have to upgrade to a cassette drop-in trigger. I've just been enjoying some of the trigger upgrades. This one has a CMC trigger for 202 bucks. I'm a big fan of these Kung Fu. I have just a couple of left. Gonna need to get some more in, but they've been going on every build that's not an accuracy build, and they're just $20. They're about the same price as a Magpul. They look way cool, they feel great. Definitely check out Kung Fu. Couple notes about the barrel. I have been enjoying Fax and Barrels. The eight inch barrel here is $235. Faxon is coming out with a match grade barrel that is the R416 stainless steel. I'm really excited about that. They said it should be available in the May-June range. I'll get one in as soon as I can. The R416 barrels are a little bit more expensive. Uh, if you're wanting a cheaper barrel option, you can check out Aiken Arms and code EagleRun23 will save you a little bit of money. Faxon Bolt Carrier Group, this is actually the same bolt carrier group that I was running in the 16 inch version. I think I'm one bull carrier group short right now, so I'm having to swap around. We'll get that fixed. I'll probably pick up another Faxon. 219 bucks for a bolt carrier group. And then I've been enjoying the Breek Arms. Uh, really a great charging handle, and it's about half the price of some of the more expensive options. A uh, really good option from Breek Arms. The Armaspec Stealth Recoil is $85. I got it from AT3 Tactical. Couple of things about the optic. This is mostly going to be a hog hunting gun, uh, but I still need to be able to test ammo during the daytime. Arkin has just come out with a Zulu. It's a day night scope and it has camera night vision. It's around $500. I'm trying to get one of those in so that I can test it. It's got some really cool stuff. A couple of YouTubers I've seen have this already and they've shown it off. I'm very interested. I think it could be a good option for a gun like that. If not, given that this is a nicer gun, I'll probably take the tracked LPVO off of the 16 inch gun. Since I'm probably not going to be running 16s very much, I'll mostly be focusing on the 12s and the 8s. I only have one 8 inch gun, but there is a new 12 inch gun in the works that I'll show you here in a couple of weeks. I just need a couple of parts to put that thing together. So total all that up and without the tax stamps or the optics, we're setting around $2,300 to build this SLR build. It's definitely more expensive. Uh, I could have built probably two or three of my cheaper options. If you wanna check out the cheapest way to build an 8.6 blackout, I'll have that video pinned up above and in the comments below. Lots and lots of options in AR-10, but we are a little limited in the AR-10 handguard. So you need to pay attention with your barrel length and then your handguard options. The handguard will get you two ways. One, the length of them doesn't always coincide exactly with the barrel lengths that you're getting. If you're wanting to do an arrow precision handguard, they actually don't make one that would work with a 12 inch build or an eight inch build. Pretty much gonna have to go to the SLR or Faxon. Faxon handguards have been sold out because they're very popular and they're priced pretty well, but Faxon did make handguard options that go well with their barrel options. The problem with AR-10 is when you start mixing and matching with different brands, and that's actually what led me to the SLR because I really wanted an SLR handguard and then I realized that it only works with the upper and then I realized that the upper that I bought doesn't work with the pins set that they have from Arrow, 
Faxon, Anderson. It's a different proprietary pin set, and so I ended up having to buy the lower later. So they got me all the way through on the SLR build. I'm very happy with it. It was just a little bit more than what I wanted to spend. So if you stick with a manufacturer on a handguard, an upper and a lower, you'll pretty much be fine. The second way you need to pay attention on the handguards is for the height. There is a DPMS high and a DPMS low. Just make sure that you're buying the same in the upper and the handguard, otherwise you're gonna end up with a little step where your handguard meets the upper receiver. Ask me how I know. All right, lots of cool stuff coming with 8.6 Blackout. I uh, hope you saw the video of us doing some ballistics testing with the guys from Howlworks. Uh, check out their ammo. I'm really excited about these 300s. I'm gonna get that optic on this gun when it comes back from Cerakote, and I will dial this gun to be ready to go hunting every single time with that 300 grain. I got really good accuracy out of it. And we'll talk 8.6 Blackout accuracy down the road. All right, guys, gotta get out of here. Gotta get back to work. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.